All right. All right. We're up in the fan head trench. Wait. I'm gonna get rid of the spider web. I like this one. Okay. Up in the fan head trench, um, right at the range front. Um, you can see behind me. Maybe you can't. I'll show you around a little bit in a minute. Yeah, uh, there's there's bedrock. And this is the range front. The right bank of of this channel now is composed of maybe six or seven meters of alluvial fan deposits, fanglomerates, if you will. And I'm standing on top of the edge, the left edge of the most recent one, the August 5th one. And um, obviously it was confined over by the right bank here. Um, in the stratigraphy exposed in this, this trench, you can see multiple, multiple um, layers, beds of debris flow deposits. Uh, many of them perhaps could be single events and it's just stacking up through time. Um, why is there a fan head trench now? Well, it could be a couple of, of reasons. Um, uh, primarily a, a big one is that the uh, the amount of sediment coming out of this drainage may be less um, than it was when this fan was a grating. That, that's one uh, potential cause. The, another cause that's very common is um, you could have base level fall here that um, lowers base level, causes this whole system to incise these head cuts, propagate upstream on up into the, the range. A um, couple of ways that you could lower base level in this setting is there's a very active uh, range front fault. It's a normal fault, meaning the valley is dropping down with respect to the, the mountain range. And it's had a couple of, of Holocene events, uh, two ground rupture and earthquakes at least in the um, last 10,000 years. I, don't, I forget the exact dates. Um, Steve Wisnowski at UNR and his students have been uh, working on this, um, this range front fault for quite a while, and, and if you really want to know, go look at their publications. Um, so a couple of, of earthquakes that have lifted the mountains relative to the valley, that would lower locally lower base level. But also you had a very large lake here in the Pleistocene. This was the southern arm of Lake Lahontan, and um, the lake extended up above where I am, I am right now um, on this range front, uh, about 1333 meters in elevation. Uh, it's probably uh, the high stands just um, above us on either side. We're probably pretty close to it. But I don't see any rounded beach gravels in these deposits, so they mostly look like um, alluvial fan deposits, which fits the setting that they're in. Um, so some of these boulders exposed in the walls here get up to 40, 50 centimeters. There, we passed a couple on the way up that were uh, one or two meters in diameter. Everything's really angular. Um, see a lot of mud drapes of, uh, of um, surface flow coming over the edge of this thing, probably um, also from rainstorms. I'll give a, um, a little close up of some of these this wall here so basically very bouldery cobbly everything's angular um, medium to thick beds maybe up to a meter but most of them look a little bit thinner than that um, greatly unsorted um, poorly sorted would be a better way to put it um, they're matrix supported in places um, a few places look class supported but I would still go with the, the debris flow kind of um, depositional environment just simply because uh, that's one of the things you find here along a, an ephemeral wash on a arid, semi-arid mountain range. Okay, uh, you see bedrock is in the um, left bank. It's to the, your right as we're walking upstream. And not sure I'm going to go any farther than this.